Hello and welcome back. So I know what you're thinking. Oh no, she's done another stacked envelope junk journal. And I did, and I, I wanted to go ahead and do a flip through and show you this one, even though I just did that five part series. Um, because I'm new to this, I learn things as I go along and um, try to hopefully improve on some ideas and that sort of thing. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. Um, I started this channel really to as a way to share um, this type of project with my Facebook page, which up until a couple of months ago was just all about jewelry. I make jewelry, so um, that I was always sharing as just photos and kind of that kind of thing because I wasn't really doing how-to. Um, but a couple months ago, I started um, doing mixed media and uh, art journaling and making journals out of books and that kind of thing. So it was easier to show those um, on a video format. So that's why I started the channel. So welcome. If you want to subscribe, just click the button and then you'll keep up with what I'm working on. I try to do a balance of jewelry things and um, the journaling things. So I keep them in different playlists so you can just kind of enjoy what you like. Um, but today I wanted to go ahead and show an, this new finished project because um, this is my third one. I still haven't finished my first one. Uh, if you watched the previous videos, I did the second one I did, I did a five part series on how to uh, make them from beginning to end. And I know there were a couple of people kind of working along with me. So I learned a couple of things. Um, obviously, since I did this first one, in that first video, I explained that I really didn't like how it went together, and I had learned how to do it by watching another video. So after I kind of got into this one, which I still haven't finished, um, I wanted to try my new ideas on a better one as a gift for somebody. So I went ahead and did that one, and that's the one that's in the series that you can watch. But even since then, I, and I was happy with that one, but even since then, I came up with another idea um, that I wanted to try. So I've done another one and I wanted to share that with you. And then of course, because I love tools and I'm so new to this and um, a lot of the followers that I have on here now, I know came from my Facebook page. So it's brand new to them too. I'm kind of getting some other people to follow me along down this rabbit hole. And um, so I like to share um, uh, the new tools and things that I find uh, along the way to see if they can maybe help you out too. So, um, first of all, the thing that I have been struggling with um, was the binding and that kind of thing, getting it to all look nice and tidy. Um, if, if you're just joining me and haven't watched the other ones, basically this is made from a file folder for the book cover part, and then the front is uh, six envelopes that kind of open on uh, to each other with lots of little pockets and places to put little tucks and, and tags and that kind of thing so that you have little areas to write little journaling things on and stick pictures and that kind of stuff. So basically I'm going to kind of go through in case there are new people on here, um, kind of how it went together and the changes that I made on this one that I'm really happy with. So basically I used a regular file folder. This one um, I've already cut it apart, but um, this was the kind that had the, uh, was closed sides. Um, that's just what I'm down to for my recycling, but any kind of work. So on this one, because um, if you watch the first videos, the suggestion was you're going to make this end up being pretty bulky. So it's better to use lighter weight papers to decorate all your envelopes and things because otherwise they're going to get too thick. This one I used... Um, one cardstock pack, which was also kind of a fun uh, challenge, I guess, is when you're new, you might not have a lot of materials to play around with. And this particular one that I did, I had I had this for a long time. Um, I, I used to use some cardstock for other things that I dig, that my jewelry tags and that kind of thing. So I had bought this pack, and in it, it had... Um, two sheets of cutouts that were like little decorative cards and it's perfect for journaling kind of things. So 
I, I grabbed this pack thinking it'll have everything. It has coordinating papers, somehow foil, there's some glittery ones. So I was able to do this journal with one pack and I have enough to do probably a few more. So um, I'll put this one in the description, um, but obviously there's lots of packs out there. I would just, if you're just starting out, look for one that has things you can cut apart. Um, I just bought another one the other day. I think this is gonna be my next journal and it has a similar kind of thing. Um, there's a page in here, a couple of pages of little things to cut out. So that's just kind of a little handy thing to know if you're just starting out. So basically you take a file folder and I didn't want on this one to have the tab and stuff. It, it was one that just had the one tab that went straight across anyway. Um, in this first one, I left it looking like a file folder. So then I had the two pockets um, and everything just from the, the file folder. Now, if you want it to look more like a book, I would just cut it off there. Um, and then it's a little shorter, but then it just looks like a clean book. And then you can always use your circle cutter and um, make a little notch there so you know there's a pocket there. For the one that I did, because I was using uh, heavy card stock for this one, I didn't want more layers than I needed. So I went ahead and just used just the back of the file folder, so it's only one layer. And then I had the front of it to cut up to use for tags and other things. So if you don't want it to be too thick, if you're using heavy, heavy cardstock, then you might consider taking that, um, taking it apart and just using one layer of it. If you used the two layers and then the heavy, it would be really hard to uh, open and close. Um, what you could do is, this is my file folder, if I'm going to use the two layers and it's going to be really thick, I could like cut just, you know, a little sliver out of one of the the front, the layer that would be the inside of your book, and then that way it, it you have room for it to open and close. So that's just maybe a tip that I might try at some point and I'll let you know how it works out. So basically, I one thing that I learned from doing the first one is that I wanted to go ahead and put the paper on the inside of the cover first. Um, the video tutorial that I watched had you have just your file folder, you attached all the envelopes just undone to the front of it um, before you did any decorating. So you had everything kind of already glued down. Now I didn't like how that worked out for me because it's how I did this one. You don't know how bulky with the paper and things that you're going to be adding that each envelope's going to get. And so they start coming apart. Um, they wanted to pull apart from my file folder. I, ha I had to patch in tape. It's like I have band-aids everywhere to try to keep it together. So that's why I decided I wanted to try it another way. So what I did is I went ahead and glued the paper that I wanted for the inside. And when I do that, I actually kind of leave it a little bit bigger than my file folder in case I don't get it on quite perfectly. Then I can go back and trim the edges. So get your paper on there first. And then what I did was um, the second one that I made, I had only one fold here. And it worked out fine. But if I want to put more signatures in for my the journaling part of my book, I put three in this one then I wanted to have a little more space in my spine. So what I did for that is I, I have used this in other videos. You, this has a scoring tool on it. It's a paper cutter with the scoring tool. But I was able to go to the big city this week, and so I stopped at um, Michael's and Hobby Lobby both. And at Michael's, I always check out the clearance uh, section, and they had this Martha Stewart... Um, scoreboard for like eight dollars so I of course I had to have that and it works out really neat they have um, a little another little tool that you know it's kind of a little guide to be able to help you make envelopes and that kind of thing I haven't tried it yet but um, I will probably do a tutorial or something when I do a card with its own envelope to let me see how that works so basically though, I want to have um, a bigger spine here. So I kind of just centered my, my 
uh, file folder here. And then I just scored a line down the middle. And then I did one on either side. And that gave me not only a place, a bigger spine um, that's rounded is now I, when I do my holes for my uh, stitching, I can do three, uh, three rows instead of just one. And that will kind of open up my book a little bit. So that is kind of one thing, depending on how many pages you can make it bigger than that. You know, you can make it really, really big with lots of pages inside. So I'm just learning about book binding. So that was just kind of a, a way I can get more signatures in. So what I did on this one is I used, um, I used cardstock and I, I did three signatures uh, with two pages, two folios each. So that's one. So basically I, I did um, my little holes. I don't know if you can see, I've only made them down the center. And to do that, you can just use, you can just use a ruler and measure where you want your holes. And you can just do three holes if you wanted. Um, because I had bought this little fancy tool, I decided to make more because it was just, it was, I just wanted it to, to try something different, really. So basically, this little tool is a book binding guide. And I showed this in another video, too, before. And I've done one set of holes already. Um, I just lined this up with my center seam. But now what I want to do is I want to make another row on either side where I made those other score marks. So I'm just going to move it over a tiny bit. kind of working in the dark for this recording and I can't see what I'm doing here. Okay, that looks good. And I'll put this in the description to this little tool. This is that We Are Memory Makers, I think it's called. I think that's the brand. And they carried this um, brand, I noticed. Um, I think I ordered it online, but they carried it. At, I saw it at Michael's. So I'm just going to make my holes, oops, can't tell if I'm doing them in the same. So I'm just using the ones that have an extra circle. I don't know if you can see that at all. So I'm just, I've decided to use this hole, the one with the extra circle. So I'm basically making another row of holes right next to the one that I already had. And I like this tool. If you don't have, um, because I can just punch right through. If you don't have that and you're just punching, you need something soft underneath. I've used my, I keep my ironing board set up all the time. And it really has a cushy top. So I use that um, to sit and punch my holes. But you can also use something like, I get this uh, packing material. I saved one of these out of... Um, a shipment we belong to and so it's perfect for something like that so it would give you something to to you know punch through to and you won't hit the top of your table so that's just kind of a little book binding thing so basically I've made two rows now but I'm not going to do the third one right now but um, you would make your third row of holes if you can see a third row for your third signature and then that way you just have a nice spine that has room in there for all the all the bulk that you're going to put inside. So that is one thing that I I did uh, different. And the other thing that I would suggest is if you're going to put um, pockets or any do want to do stitching or anything on here, that you'll do that before you sew your signatures in. Just if you're going to put this in a sewing machine, it's easier to do without other pages in. So that's what I did here is I just did one corner pocket and I stitched obviously I stitched this before I put it in the book so that it would be a pocket and then because I was using such thick paper on this one I went ahead and glued and stitched around this edge so this is really sturdy. So 
basically that's all I've done on the inside. I used cardstock, heavy cardstock in here also. Um, so it can be written on or, you know, used as scrapbooking pages, that kind of thing. It, it'll hold up. And then this was just one of the little cutouts that I turned into a pocket. I did a little scallop edge with the scissors and attached it uh, with some ribbon. And I did that, obviously, before I put it in the book. So you, you kind of do all your decorative things first and then attach it to the book. So then the next... Um, part would be doing all your envelopes. Now I'm just going to go kind of quickly here for people that are haven't watched this before so you don't have to go and really watch all the other ones. Um, you take six envelopes and this one, this next one I'm going to do a little different. On all the other ones that I've done, I do the, the larger envelopes in the back and then they stack to the smaller ones in the front. And that works out fine, and I've been doing it that way, but like I said, I like to learn new things. So I'm gonna try this one different. I thought it would be fun because I had an envelope that pretty much covered the whole front cover. I'm gonna, instead of having ties where I have a tie for the envelope portion and then a tie for this part, I want just one tie that looks like one book without this on the front. So it's gonna be there, it's just gonna be underneath. So. I'm planning on doing my envelopes kind of like this. And this is kind of what you want to do is, is, you know, pick out your envelopes, different sizes, and then kind of lay them out how you think you're going to want to arrange them ahead of time. So I've done that part. You have to sometimes cut them shorter because they're too tall. Um, and I try to alternate. So this one, um, because of the way I was going to do it, I decided to open this one on the top. Okay. And then this one I wanted to alternate. So I did this one along the side. And then this one I did at an angle. And then I did the same thing on the other side. I just alternate. I do one at an angle, one from the side. This was a really long envelope, so I had to cut. I knew I had to cut it there. Some of them, because of the size of the envelope, they're going to dictate to you how you have to do it. And then this one I did along the top. So you basically find your envelopes, decide how you want them to lay out so that you can get the openings cut, okay? And then you're gonna put a paper in what will be the back of the envelope when you're finished because you're gonna kinda see it. You won't see it a lot, but when you open it, you know, you will. So I found that because you wanna use kind of as thin of, as thin of papers as you can where you can, that that's a good place to use up old book pages because they're not gonna show too much, but it's something in the background. Otherwise I would use like um, just a thinner weight scrapbook paper or something that you know you have around, but um, nothing too heavy in there because you're gonna be adding cards. You're gonna be decorating the front and the back of these envelopes. And so it's just gonna really bulk things up. But I decided I wanted to try doing that. So it's kind of been a surprise when you open that first one that you're gonna have all these other little things inside. So when I do that, I need to, you know, the next thing you kind of have to think about before you start putting things together are where your ties are gonna go because you want them be, to be hidden between the papers. So that's kind of a next, a next thing to think about. Um, so like for this one, I'm gonna have it be, um, here in between. I want them as far to the outsides of my book as I can get them. So I'm going to have a, a tie here and then when I put the paper on the top it'll cover that. Same with the one over here. When you're doing it this way you have them here in the spine too. So you kind of have to think ahead about that because this is covered and then I put the ribbon in before I put the envelopes on. So you just kind of have to plan ahead. Okay, so that's going to be how I work on that one. The other thing that I did differently from the first and second one that I did on here and that I, I'm happy with is I wasn't real thrilled when I did this. Like I said, the envelopes, you know, it's just a thin envelope. And if you're adding cardstock to here and cardstock to here, you still, your seam is still just that thin envelope. And if you're, especially if you're doing ones where, I don't know if I did one on this one, where you're doing an angled pocket, those want to cut, you know, tear because it's just a thin envelope. So what I did is I reinforced all that ahead of time. And I, I used um, 
some paper tape that I had that uh, ha has a peel off backing. I just use this because it's what something that I had, but I, I don't really recommend it because it's still paper and so it's not as sturdy as maybe something that has some other material in it, whether it's cloth or whatever. I have some book binding tape, but I think that's too thick. So unless I can find some that's thinner, that would be nice and sturdy. But um, if you have a recommendation, put it in the comments for me. But um, masking tape, washi tape, you know, some washi tape is pretty thin too. So I, I'm not sure the best one to do. So I'm trying this one again with all the, I did it on both sides. Um, of all of them just to give me a little extra strength in those seams so basically the next thing you know once you've gotten your envelopes figured out the layout um, put the backing paper in and then just put tape um, the other reason that I wanted to do that is like on this one you can't tell now because they're all covered but one of my envelopes was dark blue like this one's dark purple and if that doesn't go with the like if like this had a, a theme a color theme if this color doesn't go with it you're going to see that stripe even in between the seam and I'm just a detail oriented person that would kind of drive me nuts so you know if this was all colorful it wouldn't matter but it's not going to be either the paper pack that I'm using so this just gives me a, a white you know start starting point for parts that might show and then on all these too, be, they're going to get mostly covered up. But if I'm using my Distress Oxide as a thing for, you know, to tone down edges, white edges and all that kind of stuff, I would use this on all those edges before I even start just to get, it's, they're going to mostly be hidden. But if you're aging your whole book like I did on this one, this would be bright white. And then it's really hard to get in there and do that. So you know, before you even get to decorating, go ahead and, and um, age all your, ink up all your edges that you want to have look vintage. So that's kind of the two things I think that were um, kind of most important um, that I did differently. One thing I want to go back just because I, I didn't share this. When you're cutting your pages for the inside, um, you know, you want them to be a tiny bit smaller than the cover of the book. And so I take, I do one page when I, when I did this, I did it at the same time so that when I put it, when I measured out my holes or put it in my little tool or whatever, I eyeballed where I want it to go because I can't just butt this to the bottom or my whole book would be like, you know, would be like this. So I do one, one of my pages so that I have a template and then I can take additional pages, put them in my tool or lay them out and just use this as my template for my holes. So that's just kind of another little, little tip that you might want to remember. So basically that was kind of the two things um, and I just wanted to go and do a flip through with this, this book that I did. Um, so I used, um, this is just seam binding ribbon and the one I had is just white. But I used, um, I dyed it. Uh, you can use any of your ink sprays or any of that kind of stuff and dye it. Um, but I actually used uh, Jane Davenport uh, pastel. You know, anything that you can throw color on, you know, if you don't want something to be bright white. Um, I just used this. It looks like a little makeup thing. It's to do faces. But um, I just used that one with a little makeup sponge. And I wetted my ribbon first and then um, just wiped a little blush color on there and then use my heat tool to dry it and kind of scrunch it up, you know, as you dry it. And so it's all kind of wrinkly looking. So that's just kind of a little different ribbon. And then my first page here, these are a couple of the cutouts um, from that page of cutouts. Um, this one had gold around it and I just cut the whole tag part out. And then I had made with the rest of my file folder um, and I had a little nest stamp. I tried to kind of match the color of that and put little lines. Some stuff I put lines on, some I didn't, just to write. This was a little tag that um, I had made when I mass made uh, some tags for the little window ones. If you watched that tutorial, this was just another one of those little tags. 
I did a lot of stitching on this book. I did three different stitches. I did it this zigzag on some and a straight stitch on some. It's probably why it took me so long was because I did a lot of stitching. But I really like it because it just makes me feel like it's really reinforced and it will hold together nicely. And this was just one of the papers. and put little lines on the back. And of course for all my, you know, that, that paper pack was pretty, um, pretty bright. And you can see I've aged everything um, in this book, which I kind of, I think it just kind of warms it up a little bit. And then on the inside of that one, that was just another one of the um, cutouts that were already in the book. And then this um, was a striped paper, and I just added a little sticker, a butterfly sticker. And then I did, I did uh, use one other little paper just to kind of not... I'm not a huge pastel, bright color, light, airy kind of person, so I wanted to just add a little bit of brown to kind of break it up for me. Um, but this was another one of the stickers, so this one paper back here um, I did take out of another pack, but I just used a little bit of it. And then this I just fussy cut a flower. It's a little metallic, uh, uh, I don't know what they call it, glittery, glittery kind of paper. And then I did a little pull out here. And I save all my little scraps. So this was the main paper. And then these little slivers were just, you know, when you're trimming something a little more and you have all these little pieces left, I just run those through my sticker maker. And then I have them and I just cut, you know, whatever length I need to add to something. But it kind of gets these all in a place where I can find them. So I just did that and added some little uh, words here with a joyous spirit and put some lines on the back. And then I had made a bunch of these little um, tabs. I did those in another tutorial that I did on my Cricut. Um, you can buy a tab uh, punch, but it's just one size. So I had made these on my Cricut a bunch of different sizes. So I now have a pattern that I can just use, but you can buy, you can buy a little um a tab maker a punch and then on the inside of this one I just did this was just one of the cutouts again and I just used a, a scallop scissor to you know and sewed it on for like a little belly band and then this was the other paper that I used just to have one little different the color kind of went with it um, and then I just took these out of a little notepad and I sew across here um, because then it makes it perforated so you can just tear them off so it's just like a little shopping list kind of pad. And then this was another tutorial that I had done in one of the other ones with these little mini file folders. And basically it's just a regular file folder with the, t the tab part. And then I just cut it down to make it look like a miniature size. But I left that as exactly how the tab was. Um, and then to make it look like a real file folder, I did my fold score mark, but then I did... Um, you can kind of see I did three or four other score marks, so it looks like an expanding file folder. And then this was just some coffee-stained um, paper that I had made <clears throat> with copies of uh, French postcards. And it's coffee-stained, so it really kind of washed out the ink. But I like that. It just kind of makes it like vintage blank paper to write on. And then this one says, a little bit of everything. And I put it on a, just made a little pocket out of one of the papers. And of course I stitched first. This was one of the cutouts and I just did a fancy stitch around, put that together and then stitched it on to my other paper. And when I did these, I, because I was decorating them without the envelopes being attached to my book, I had the freedom to stitch it right to the envelope, which, you know, just gives you that added, um, you know, support. For keep things from kind of tearing apart because I actually sewed it too. So I would sew one side on and then glue the other side on so that, um, you know, it, it, it just kind of made a complete package. And if I wanted like this one, I stitched around. If this is the one that I stitched to the envelope and I wanted to have stitch marks around the other one, I could just stitch it first and then glue it to the envelope. So you just have to kind of, again, think ahead. I actually had all of this, each envelope laid out 
so that my papers would be coordinating, but I wouldn't have this, the identical paper right next to the other one, that kind of thing. So I laid everything out before I started putting anything together just to have my papers all picked out. Um, and then where the little di different decorations going. So it was kind of, you know, a lot of planning kind of thing, but then it was fun because by the time you got to actually putting everything together, it, you, that was when you just did the stitching and all the fun parts. So that that was a good way to, to do it for me anyway. This is another little tutorial that I had in one of the other ones where I made little mini file folders. Um, and this one I had, so this one I had mass made a bunch of them, so I just grabbed one and used it. And then just some more tags out of the leftover file folder material and um, some of the coordinating papers. And then this is just, these are just little bird stamps I had. For these, because I wasn't using black, dark brown was kind of my, my black in this one, I used um, this ground espresso ar archival ink for my stamping. And again, this was just another one of the cutouts that was there. And then a little pull out with the tab. I like to do little notches and tab um, pulls for so you know that there's something in there. And then just a couple extra tags that I made. And these reinforcements, somebody had asked me about these. These I made on my Cricut also, and then I just put them into my sticker maker so that they can be sticky. Now you can, if you can find, you probably can, and I just need to look, um, the craft, this would just be craft cardstock. But if you can find that sticker paper, uh, I have it in white and I have, it, I've seen it in, um, in um, chalkboard paper. I would assume that they make it in craft paper and then that would save a step. You could just run the sticker paper um, and have your Cricut cut them out and they would already be on sticker paper. So I'm gonna have to look for that. But that's how I, that's how I did those. And then here, just another little card with a little uh, sticker. And I didn't even put lines on that one. And then I pull out, and this was another tutorial that's in the other series um, where I did these window, uh, um, how to make these little window tag things. So in this one I stitched on. And just another little pull out. I left some of them blank without right making lines on them because, you know, maybe she wants to use them to put pictures or something like that. And then this side I just did, um, this was another one of the cutouts already done. I didn't even have to decorate it. And then some coffee stained ledger paper just to, I sewed it right in there just to make another little notepad. Oops, little hijacker. Just another little pull out. This is just some more coffee stained paper. And I had stitched around this probably from the other side, yep. Yeah. And then just a tag, easy ones to make, again with the little things, but um, just some little pockets and tags. And then this side, I just made a, t a torn edge kind of pocket. And I, I had these tags. I didn't want everything to be a pocket on the bottom. And, you know, I needed room for these the size of the, that the tags were. So I just kind of left them hanging out there. And I kind of like how that looks. And then I just did another little easy sewn pocket. Same thing over here. I, I really liked this paper, but I didn't have enough to cover the whole envelope. So I just did a coordinating one, and instead of just gluing them both down, I left it, I left room here. And it doesn't go all the way through, but I, I just made a little bookmark to stick there. Some of the papers, when you do the inking on it, I use this um, Distress Oxide Vintage Photo for all of mine. And sometimes you'll, if it's especially if this is a new one, you'll get too much ink on there. Like you can see, it looks really dirty on the edge. So what happens, you can use a baby wipe to wipe it down, but when you do, it becomes really yellowed, at least this color does, much more so than if you just aged it and kind of left it. But I did too much on this one, and so that's what happens. But I'm only pointing that out because this particular paper pad, when you go with the baby wipe and try to clean something off, it took the blue off too. 
so I had a little boo-boo here, so I just put a little butterfly. So, you know, stuff happens, and, and you just, you know, find little ways to cover it up. Put little patches, that kind of stuff. And then this one has another little pull-out. So I, that's another little cutout I, I made out of that extra paper that I, I used. And then this, I just, for the tab of this one, I just did a circle and folded it in half for my tab. And then this was the other tool that I want to show you because it's really kind of neat. You can make tags of any length, and that was kind of fun. So I did some lines on the back of there. And then here, just another tag. Just lots of places to write things. This little butterfly, I have an actual punch that um, punches out these little butterflies. So they kind of look lacy. I probably just, I think Michael's is where I got that that punch. And again, just another little tag there. Now when you put your envelopes on, you know, once you you have that part done, the part I've just flipped through, then you want to put them on to your uh, book before you put this on because this is going to hide all of the all the flaps from your envelopes. Um, so before you do that though, you want, I want to show you how I finished out my my book cover. So if you want your stitching from sewing your signatures in, if you want it to show, like this one that I did, it came out, you know, pretty tidy, so I wouldn't have minded, you know, having it show up. I used, um, because I bought that book binding kit, it had some waxed thread, um, which is the right kind of thread to do stitching instead of just, I had been using just um, like button thread, upholstery thread. This is a little bit heavier and it's waxed, so it just looks really nice and clean. So I could have left it because I basically, you know, did just a, a stitch up one side, then I added the next signature in, came up down the next one, and continued on. Um, so it was it was pretty tidy looking, but I, I didn't know it was going to be, so I went ahead and I had already decided I wanted to make my cover, um, cover all that stitching. So what I did is I just took a piece of uh, the cardstock, this polka dot one, and I just figured, kind of like a book, I mean, I kind of just, you know, books are like that. They have the book binding cloth tape on there. So I just took that piece of paper and I did my score marks the same distance um, so that it would fit around that same spine. Um, and I think probably when I did it, I just did the two outside ones and I didn't do one down the center. And then one tip I would say is glue that down first, just the spine, because it'll gap if you don't, you know, so imagine this is my thing here. So glue this part down first and let it dry so that it's really stuck down there. And then you can glue, put glue and do the other sides. And then I just, um, oops. At that point is when I put this ribbon in because I wanted this, this paper, I wanted to hide, you know, anything, so you can't really see, but that blue polka dot one wraps around, and it's behind here, and it doesn't, it goes to about here, you can kind of see, but I just like how, you know, clean, cleaned it, cleaned up and made it look, and then for the back, then all I had to do is I just needed to strip this big, course I put my ribbon in there first so that finished my back okay and then I put the envelopes on and went this keeps falling out here um, so when I did that I you know then they're already thick so I kind of know um, when I put them on I can have them all stacked nice so on this one you can see I was putting on envelopes that weren't decorated yet so they all, you know, an envelope is thin, so they all were right to the edge of my book. Well, once they bulk up, they don't have room to be there in that way. So you can see here, th the back one is actually set a little bit forward. This one's a little more, and this one's a little, a little more. So you kind of put those all together as a unit and glue those flaps together before you put it onto your, co onto your cover. Okay, and then once you have it on your cover, it makes it look like I have just one continuous seam there. So I, I like how that worked out 
much better. It just looks more professional, I think. And if you're going to sell these, you know, you want it to look... Um, so far, I'm just doing them as gifts, just to get lots of practice. But um, once I've kind of burn out all my friends who want one, then I'll, I'll be selling them, I guess. So anyway, you just fold them back in, and there you have it. One more down. Someday I'll get back to finishing the one, the first one that I started for myself, but it's uh, not on my highest priority. So there you go. So if you have any questions, um, please put them in the comments for me. I'll try to remember any of the little things that I did. Oh, I was going to show you that one more tool that I want to put in there because it was a lot of fun. It was on my little shopping spree that I went on this week. So I got this at Hobby Lobby, and um, I don't know the brand because it doesn't have it on here. I think it's just whatever their store brand. I've only been to Hobby Lobby twice in my life, um, so I don't know what their normal brand is, but I'll try to look it up online and see. And I just got it this week and they had these. I don't know how long the sale is till, but this one was like normally $25 or something. I never, you know, would have probably bought it unless I just knew I was going to make lots of tags, but, um, they were 40% off. So, uh, go online and, and maybe you can, uh, if they still have them and the sale's still on. The, the neat thing about it is I had another tag punch, but mine, um, punches out a whole tag right? So, and they have these in different sizes. This I got at Michael's, but you know, it cuts out the whole tag, which that's handy to have for my window ones is perfect. But this one was really neat because it does three different sizes. And in the package, I was like, how can it do that? Because I just don't, my mind couldn't wrap around it, but you can make them any length. So your paper just hangs out the bottom. So it makes them two and a half inch, two inch and one and a half. So basically there's little steps on here. If you can see, so I'm going to put my paper in. This will be the big one. And it also kind of makes a little embossing, I guess. I don't know what you call that. Um, where you can kind of see where your reinforcement would go. So that's kind of neat. Which I have. You can buy. You, I made these on my Cricut, which was crazy. But you can just buy these. They're just craft little reinforcements. And then, you know... Then it looks like a, a tag you went out and bought. But the fun thing is then you can do them out of um, decorative papers and stuff too. And I like the little edge. So what happens is that's the two and a half inch. And then this one you would put in between the, the two inch. I made it a little bit too wide. So what it did is it took just this part of the design. And then the one and a half inch... Just took that little top part of the design. I just really like that you can make them any length because if you're doing it for a pullout of a long envelope, you can make it fit the whole envelope. So I just thought that was another little handy tool. So if they're still on sale, 40% off. I mean, that's just amazing to me. So um, anyway, again, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, if you do, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to keep seeing more. I do put my jewelry ones in a different playlist than I do the, the journaling ones, so you can kind of just wait, watch what you want. So anyway, I hope you have a enjoy the rest of your day, and go make something. Bye.